arguably what is the sort of the most, the pivotal game of uh, mm -hmm. 2004 is Half-Life 2. Uh, and that is the game that, uh, I mean, it was a first in so many ways. Uh, it was the first game that required the use of Steam in order to, to boot up. It was the first game in Valve's uh, sort of now ubiquitous source engine, which ended up powering Left 4 Dead and, and from you know Titanfall and Portal. Team Fortress 2. And Team Fortress yes. 2, yeah. Um, and yeah, it is. Uh, it was our game of the year at the time and pretty much everyone else's game of the year because it just raised the bar so high. Game of the game, all games. Every game, game of the games? Yes. Game of the games. Everybody's yeah. king of games. Yeah, it's every the every time game of games. It's the game of games. Every time you see it. <laughs> Every time you see Topless, it's always hanging it's, around up there. Yeah. It just, it's, to this day, you can go back and play it right now, and I'm still blown away at, like, mm. how they are managed to craft this wonderful FPS story that doesn't require cutscenes, mm -hmm. doesn't require taking mm -hmm. a cinematic on and go, hey, you gotta look at this. They'll direct, like, if you go through the developer commentary for this game, mm -hmm. you find so many interesting things of, like, how they're able to go, like, we want people to look at this, you know, explosion. So we just right. said, hey, let's kind of let the player go this way, and then they'll see this thing that mm -hmm. happens. And otherwise, you'd be like, every other game developer would say, oh, I gotta have a cutscene to show this thing. No, they were just like, you, as you walk, you're seeing the story unfold before your eyes. And you can actually just turn around and look the other way if you wanted to. That's your call. And they were very bold making a decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it really expert storytelling. And this is sort of where like the characters like, you know, Alex and, and Dr. Right. Vance and everything like really came in their own. You started caring about people. Like it's still it's always that weird thing where Gordon Freeman is the like prototypical cipher for the player. He doesn't speak and you're sort of like, why would Alex fall in love with this weirdo scientist dude? <laughs> He's, <very shy. laughs> He's very shy. So shy that he literally doesn't speak. Yeah, um, I'll even see polls of like who is the greatest video game character of all time. And a lot of times Freeman wins. Yeah. yeah. What, yeah. Do, what do you think is the appeal of the character for that? Glasses. <laughs> glasses, Thanks, crowbar. Yeah. Uh, um, I think um, I think a large part of why he was such a good character and a cool character was that gravity gun. Yeah. That was the coolest the coolest weapon in a, in a FPS game I've yeah. ever used. Being able to manipulate everything from when you first, the, the way they set it up, where you first get to play fetch with a robot yeah. dog, and they're like, oh no, an explosion. Better go to that town everyone says not to go to. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there's saw blades everywhere with your yeah. gravity gun. Good. I'm like, yeah. oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, it's the scariest point in a game for me to that point was oh, Ravenholm. Ravenholm. Yeah. It still terrifies to this day, but it's also, mm. you're also a kid in a candy store where everything is falling off and you can just use things as weapons. Yeah, it was it was showcasing like the Havoc phys uh, physics engine, which mm -hmm. recently came out then. It was just the mm -hmm. the sort of playground aspect of it, and it's, uh, you know, some of it was, yeah, you can use these as weapons or you need to solve a puzzle, but a lot of it was just like, look what you can do. Right. It was sort of flexing that creative muscle. Yeah. And even in addition to that, like with the other uh, games we've touched on, this game, like Half-Life 2 is so universal. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, like, it's, it's so well known by Pretty much everyone in this industry, and mm -hmm. even without this, outside of this industry, it was the first demo I ever played on Oculus Rift before I played any other like yeah. like technology demos. Mm -hmm. The first demo I ever did was just a Half Life Two demo in Oculus Rift. Like yeah. that's how meaningful this game is. Yeah, and for a 11 year old shooter, it still holds up. It's it, still it really gorgeous. Does. It still it has really some, does. you know incredible mechanics, great storytelling, and obviously in uh, 2006 and seven we got episodes uh, one and two, mm -hmm. which you know continued the story and 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 pushed it even further and ended on a, a real cool cliffhanger uh, that has literally never going to have a payoff. <laughs> Some Rest say in they're pieces. waiting until this day and yeah. still no sign of yeah. Half Life Three. What is that? Eight years? That's a long time. Don't remind me. I'm going to remind you. It's a long I think time. people enjoy the ongoing joke of like when we're going to get it. You know, yeah. I was I was having a discussion yesterday and we said you know if this actually happens. What is what are we gonna say? What is our next? What are we gonna say every E3 when they're like, what are the most expected games you want to see? I think we have like Half-Life Four. Yeah, yeah. Half-Life Four. Yeah. Yeah. Half -Life 4. That, but yeah. everyone loves that joke though. The Valve can't count to three joke. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Team Fortress Two, Left 4 Dead Two, yeah. Yeah. Portal, Portal Two, Portal, Portal two, two, just yeah. ending it too. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Valve. This is also you know uh, Half-Life Two like made you sort of paved the way for what Valve would be today. Like mentioning right. games like Half -Life, or Left 4 Dead and like Portal and like Team Fortress Two and yeah. now Dota. Um, I mean, how how massive of that is. And when you look at Dota, you're almost like, well, can can Valve ever go back to a traditional single player mm -hmm. model? Yeah. Yeah. But it really did establish them. Half-Life 2 really did establish. Yeah, I mean Valve. such a yeah, such a phenomenal game that and that's sort of the reason like I think The Last Guardian is the only other game where we sort of do that thing with like mm -hmm. yeah. when are we gonna see The Last Guardian? And the reason is because the pedigree before it is so high 
that we're willing to keep waiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we're not going to get mad. We're just going to be like, well, you guys have sort of been perfect so far, so we'll just give you all the time in the world. <laughs> Take your time. If you're not yeah. ready to discuss it, all right. It's yeah. Cool with me. So when are we going? When are we going to see Half Life Three? Are we calling years it? Are we, are we calling it? Are we, are we calling psychics? It? <laughs> yeah. We're in 2015 now. We're in 2015. 2030. 20. <laughs> <laughs> 2025. I'm going to call never. Like, never. <laughs> I don't know if you can ever win, though. But you can never lose. Oh, yeah. Uh, betting. The only, winning move is, <laughs> the only winning move is not to play. Yeah. Hey, if you die in the game, you die in real life. Yeah. All the references. Wayne Gretzky. <laughs>